Hello, chess enthusiasts. The year is 1965, and we are in Havana, Cuba. This is a game from the fourth annual Capablanca Memorial International Chess Tournament. Bobby Fischer has the white pieces, and Jose Perez, squared, has the black pieces. Fischer starts e4, and Perez responds d6. After d4, knight f6, we enter the Pirk defense. Then knight c3, g6, and Fischer chooses the aggressive f4, marking the Austrian attack. We have bishop g7, knight f3, and black castles. White has a firm grasp on the center, whereas black chooses to attack the central pawns from the wings. In this position, I was thinking of the move bishop c4, which Bobby Fischer loved to play. It activates the bishop while eyeing a delicate diagonal. However, black has a tactic here. Knight captures on e4, and when recaptured, d5 forking the bishop and knight. After the dust settles, white is uncastled, and there is immense pressure on the central pawns. Rewind a few moves. Better here is bishop takes f7. Nonetheless, black has the bishop pair and has equalized. So Fischer wisely plays bishop d3. Then knight c6, and white marches forward with e5. Some pawn exchanges, then an exchange of knights, and white plays c3. We are left with a position where white has the advantage with more space and more active minor pieces. The black dark squared bishop is biting on concrete while the knight on c6 isn't helping the cause either by impeding the c5 advance. Black plays bishop g4 and there are some interesting lines here. A seemingly normal move here is to castle, but black can play the outrageous bishop takes e5. And after the recapture, rook f to d8 with an attack and pin on the bishop. Bishop c2 is dead lost because of queen c5 check winning the queen. Bishop e2 just leads to an endgame where black is up a pawn. The best move is queen a4, a counterattack. Don't forget, black sacrificed a bishop, so they are just a piece down if they take on d3. Instead of capture on f3, the rook recaptures and the nice knight takes e5 with a double attack. Once all is said and done, white has two bishops for a rook and two pawns. A very dynamic position. The engine prefers white, but it's anyone's game. Back to reality, white played queen e2, which is in fact the best move. Next is rook a to d8, bishop e4, queen d7, and h3. It would be ill-advised to give up the bishop pair in an open position, so the bishop retreats to e6. White castles, and here black should play f6 to not only chip away at white's center, but also give his pieces some breathing room. Instead, bishop d5, an exchange of bishops, and the white dark squared bishop finally joins the game, x-raying the unguarded c7 pawn. Then a surprising move, or at least to me, b5. The more I looked at it, the more I found it to be a good way for black to create counterplay. There's an idea to play b4, biting at the pawn chain closer to its base. There is also potential to reroute the knight to c4 where it's more active. White plays rook a to d1, lining up the rook with the enemy queen, and black plays a6 to not tie down the queen to the defense of the pawn. Then the beautiful, but subtle, b3, killing black's counterplay. The c4 square is no longer an option for the knight, and the move b4 would be met with c4, leading to a stampede of white pawns. Black is confined to what small space they have left. Instead, black plays knight a5, making way for the c pawn. Then e6, and black can't be too hasty with c5 because of bishop c7 winning material. So rook c8. We see pawn takes f7, rook takes f7, and the white knight jumps to g5 infiltrating black's camp. Rook f6, and rook d to e1 with an eye on the e6 square. Black's final attempt is b4, knight e6, and pawn takes c3. Fischer finishes the game up with knight takes g7, and Perez throws in queen takes d4. White dodges check, and black resigns. Capturing the knight is a death wish, leading to mate, or massive material loss. And playing this position down a piece is too steep a hill to climb. I hope you enjoyed this game. Subscribe for more.